Hi there, welcome to Wassel Woodworking. On today's episode, we're gonna be making this zigzag bowl. It's made of walnut and curly maple. And it's a segmented bowl, and unlike some of the others I've done in the past, this one's a little bit more complex because of this layer where the uh, five layers zigzag across. So let's see how it's done. So we start off by taking our raw lumber and cutting it to length and to width. And a couple of these, I'm after making the smaller strips, so I'll end up cutting them uh, vertically to resaw them. And as you can see right here in this montage, uh, we're getting all the cutting done, getting it right. And the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be sliding it right into the planer to get it cleaned up. So the pieces go through the planer and this prepares them to be glued up to make the five layers for the zigzag board. In order to make the zigzag board, the five pieces have to be laminated together with glue. So here I am putting the wood glue on the boards and then I will smooth them out and put them together. Uh, next you have to take all these pieces and clamp them up so that the glue line is as small as you can get it and there aren't any gaps in between the boards. So this sled allows me to cut each of the pieces in the segmented ring. Each one has a change of 30 degrees, so each side of it is 15 degrees, and this actually sled lets me do that very accurately, and I cut an extra one, so I have a total of 13 pieces. When gluing up, you want to do this kind of quickly because you don't want the glue to set up too much before you have a chance to put the clamp around the whole thing. So I'm adding alternating sides as I add the different segments together, and eventually you get this done and uh, it doesn't take more than about a minute which is why i'm showing this in 10 times speed okay and this piece should slide in fairly well it's not perfect but you know once you tighten the clamp up the glue line will spread evenly and uh so i'm just not too worried about that So now we're back to our five layer lamination. We're going to be uh, taking this after I glued it up and running across the joiner to get one smooth flat face. Next, it's off to the planer where we put that through to make both faces parallel to each other. And then once that's done, I take it to the table saw and start uh, with the jig in order to cut it off at a 30 degree angle. And I'm using that uh, magnetic handhold as a stop so that each piece is the same. So I needed 24 of these pieces, and wouldn't you know what, I ended up with 23 and some scraps from the end, those odd triangles. So if you cut the end of those and clean them up like I'm showing in the video here, you can actually put them side by side and make them match up to create one piece, which was just slightly larger than what I needed. So the trick is how to cut these safely. So after gluing them up, I put them on my table saw sled, and using some jigs and some um, safety devices, held it and cut it to its final width, which was just barely enough to get the job done. So this piece right here is all that's left of that piece of wood that I laminated together. I thought I had enough, but uh, I'll tell you that's cutting it a little too close for comfort. So now I take each of these pieces and I glue them up in pairs uh, with some glue and it's pretty quick and you just clamp them together and you're, you're done So all the pieces have been cut and they're all ready to start Chopping the tops and bottoms off so I can start to turn them into segments So it was back to my table slaw using the sled that I made in one of my earlier episodes on this channel cutting the tops and the bottoms off in this case, I've cut the bottoms and then I'll flip right back around and run through all 12 of them again on the sled in order to cut the pointed tips off, making a nice little square. These squares will then be taken in another jig that I had to make up that allows me to cut a 15 degree bevel on each side. And I'll do this on one side, take, unclamp it, flip it around and cut it again on the other side and this allows for each segment to have a total of a 30 degree transition from side to side. With all the layers put together and stacked up I get a preview of what this bowl is going to look like in the very end. It's kind of neat to spin. So I've taken uh, each half and there was a little chip here from a piece I had to put in um, 
anyway, so I've taken a little scrap like this and I've broken it off and put it right in there. So now I actually have to just cut, trim that off and um, that'll probably end up getting taken out when the bowl's made anyway. But that's filling the crack in just a big chunk to put that in there. But I will uh, sand that off. Then I'll sand both these parallel and then glue them back up together. So. All right, so I brought these two pieces back and they're now flush. So maybe you can see better right there. And as you put them together, now there is, well, where the garbage on the table, put it together and uh, there is no gap. So, oops, that went upside down. Anyway, that was close call. Anyway, I'm gonna glue this up like that and then clamp it shut. And that one little spot where you saw that little chip was right there. Fills and you can see a little bit on the outside, but that'll get trimmed off when you end up rounding it over. So now I have to glue this up and then put the clamp back on to hold it in place. All right, so that's all glued together. So I'm gonna take these two sides and put them together. I like to slide them against each other. That helps uh, distribute everything well. And then once it's where I think it should be, that's actually it right there. I'll then take this clamp, put this clamp back on. So now it's off to the disc sander. I've taken the table and the front guard off and it's being flattened on the disc. This allows each of them to be glued up to each other without any uh, gaps. And once that's done, it's back to the workbench and I'm gonna start gluing them up. All right, so I've uh, got my two of these rings ready to put together. I've already glued up some of the others. Now I'm just gonna take this and put on the glue. Make sure I use plenty of glue. Most of this will probably be wasted, but better enough than not enough. Don't want a dry joint. And uh, anyway, these surfaces are nice and flat. Uh, everything looks good. I made a mark on here where it needs to line up. And got these other tabs on here to keep it from sliding off. Okay, so I've been, been turning this bowl and uh, taking it down fairly smooth on the inside and I'm trying to use a scraper at this point to get this surface into a nice smooth transition. Alright, so the bowl has been sanded. It's been sanded using 150 to 220 to 320 to 400, all the way up to 1500 grit, and it really produces a nice smooth finish. I can't find any scratches left on it, so I think it looks good. So I'm gonna take it off and mount it to the plate and uh, turn the bottom. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take this and I'm going to put tape over the top of it here so that let's try to protect it some. Let's see if that makes it. There it does. So what I've uh, done is I've taken the tailstock and pushed it in here. That'll keep it from coming off. And then I'll slowly start to eat this piece up. Reduce the speed. It's very important while you're turning this to be very careful to keep some pressure against it because the grips that are holding the bowl can come loose and you don't want to lose it at this time. So now I'm working on the bottom. I'm trying to cut a space in there so it'll sit well and making it flat so that I can then 
stamp my initials and the date in the bottom of the bowl, but for some reason I seem to have left that particular segment of video off, and uh, so you won't be able to see that, unfortunately. So here's the bowl, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blow all the dust off, then I'm going to come back with some mineral spirits, and I'm going to wipe it all down, get rid of any remaining dust, and then I'll be using Wacol Danish Oil Finish, uh, the natural version of it, which is clear, to bring out the color. So I've blown all the dust off, and now I'm going to take some mineral spirits, clean mineral spirits, and I will wipe anything off. I'm ready to apply the Waco oil at this point, so I'll just actually pour a little into the bottom and take my cloth. And rub it all around. It really makes the uh, wood look good. We'll say that much. We'll let that sit for a while and come back in 15 minutes. So at this point the oil's been on here drying and uh, I come back every 30 minutes, an hour or so and just wipe off any of the oil that's oozing out of the pores so remember this finish is a finish that cures within the wood, not on top. So if it gets to the top of the wood, you want to wipe it off. Otherwise, it'll make it feel gummy. And uh, still not sure yet what I'm going to put on top of this. I may end up um, putting polyurethane on top of it just to get that pretty shiny look. Although it's very pretty right now, as you can see. So I decided not to use polyurethane on it. I went with just the Waco oil as you saw in that last scene and it turned out very pretty. It's now dry and I've had it around my house for a few weeks. It's gotten a lot of great reviews by people that have uh, stopped by to see it and I hope you enjoyed this. So if you did, please subscribe today if you would and put your comments below and let me know what you thought about this. Uh, I really enjoyed making this one. It was a little more complicated than others, but thanks for sticking in there and watching the whole thing. So I'll see you next time on Wassel Woodworking.